Here goes 5.9 solubility. All right, so we're continuing with solutions, obviously. And we're going to talk about solubility factors. And solubility is defined as how much of a solute will dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. So usually we refer to something that has high solubility as soluble and something that has low or no solubility as insoluble. Something very important to remember. How do you speed up the rate at which things dissolve? Well, two things, by stirring or heating. They generally speed up the rate at which things dissolve. Now, why do some things dissolve while others don't? Key, very important phrase to remember. Like dissolves like. Like dissolves like. Gotta know it. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if we talk about our solute types, okay, you can have a, a substance, you know, right? You can have things that are covalent or ionic. So something that's nonpolar versus polar versus ionic. And if we talk about our solvents, right, we're not going to have an ionic solvent because that would be a solid. That would just wouldn't make sense. So here we're going to talk about nonpolar and polar as our solvent. So if we try to dissolve something nonpolar in something nonpolar, like dissolves like, it would be soluble. If we just try to dissolve something polar into something nonpolar, it's going to be insoluble. Now if you see here, things that are ionic and polar are going to behave similarly at this point in the game. So an ionic substance trying to dissolve into a nonpolar solvent will be insoluble. Try to dissolve a nonpolar solute into a polar solvent, insoluble. Polar into polar, soluble. Ionic into polar, soluble. Why? Because like dissolves like. All right, so let's take a look at some more solubility factors. All right, temperature. As we saw in table G, solids, when there's a higher temperature, there's a greater solubility. Gases, when there's a lower temperature, there's a greater solubility. Now pressure. Now this applies only to gases because pressure doesn't affect solids, pressure doesn't affect liquids, but only applies to gases. Higher pressure is going to lead to a greater solubility. And then obviously a lower pressure would lead to a lower solubility. In order for a reaction to take place in water, all the reactants must be soluble. Okay, There's going to be more on this later on when we get to uh, redox and the like. Now something that does not dissolve in water and settles out is called a precipitate. All right, so that's, we'll use what I've used already, the cup of tea. All right, you start putting sugar in. Whatever sugar clumps at the bottom is referred to as a precipitate. When there's a chemical reaction that takes place in water, the chemical reaction takes place, some of the stuff might be dissolved, others might settle out to the bottom, that's also referred to as a precipitate. All right, so why the soda can here? All right, well, when, pa when soda's packaged, right, you get the can or the bottle new from the store, the outside feels really hard. When you go to squeeze it, you can't really squeeze it. But when you open it, some pressure is released. You know, so the pressure is going to decrease quickly in the can, and that's going to decrease the solubility. Remember, higher pressure, greater solubility. Lower pressure, when we open the can, it's lower pressure. There's going to be less solubility, and the gas escapes. Psst. That's the fizz or the pss when you open a soda or any carbonated beverage. All right, table F. Solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions. This is going to tell you what and what is not soluble in, well, it's aqueous, so in water. All right, so we have to pay attention here to two things. 
There's one on the left shows us what's soluble in water. And this is, gives generally what's soluble, but we have to pay attention to these exceptions. Over here on the right, it's going to show ions that form insoluble compounds, things that won't dissolve. Once again, pay attention to the exceptions. So let's see here. Potassium nitrate, KNO3. Well, when we look on here, right, we have NO3 nitrate is always going to be soluble. So based on that, it's going to be soluble. Also, group 1 ions form soluble compounds. So with no exceptions, right, because there's no exceptions here, no exceptions here, KNO3 will be soluble. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Well, calcium is not a group 1. It's a group 2. Doesn't say anything about calcium. What about here, insoluble? Oh, carbonates tend to be insoluble. So the fact that there's a carbonate here tells us it's going to be insoluble. Let's look at the exceptions. When combined with group 1 ions or ammonium. Well, is calcium a group 1? No, it's a group 2. So it's not an exception, meaning it's this, calcium carbonate, is insoluble. MgSO4, magnesium sulfate. Well, let's look here. Ooh, sulfates are generally soluble. So the fact that it's a sulfate tells us it should be soluble, but let's see if magnesium is an exception. Except when combined with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, or lead, nope, none of those is magnesium, so it's not an exception, so magnesium sulfate is soluble. Ammonium hydroxide. Ions that form soluble compounds, ammonium forms a soluble compound with zero exceptions. So this is going to be soluble. All right, next, concentration. Concentration is the measure of the amount of solute present in a unit amount of mixture. And we're going to use two things for concentration. We're either going to use molarity or ppm, parts per million. Fortunately, both are on the reference table. Table T. Parts per million is mass of solute divided by mass of solution, so both are usually going to be in grams or kilograms, times a million. Molarity is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. And we're going to do examples of both of these in class. I've hit you with enough math on videos lately that we'll take a break from video math. We'll do these in class. All right, question time. What do you call something that is not soluble in water? What types of substances dissolve in water? Can't get them. Go back, watch it again. See you guys in school.